The poem Ode to Evening was composed by William Collins in 1747. This poem gives expression to Collins's fate in nature. Welcome back friends. This is Majibin. Today I am going to present a paraphrase of William Collins's poem Ode to Evening. In the first stanza, the poet calls upon the spirit of evening. He expresses his desire to compose a song in the nature of a pastoral lyric. It would comfort the years of evening just like murmuring brooks and gradually dying winds do. The poet describes the sunset in an allegorical way. He describes the sun as an orb with bright hair. This bright-haired sun is shown as taking rest in his tent. This tent is made of ethereal clouds. The edges of these clouds are also bright. These cloudy edges or skirts are hanging from the wave-like bed of the sun. All of nature is in silence. There is a lovely and pensive calmness prevailing everywhere. Only occasionally the weak-eyed bat sets up a short shrill cry while it tries to fly to a short distance softly with its light wings. Sometimes the beetle creates a droning sound while it rises from the ground and flies into the air. At this time, a lonely traveller is seen advancing on his path and not paying attention to the dull and monotonous drone of the beetle. It's in this period of time that the poet prays to the calm and quiet evening to teach him to sing a soft and tender song. The notes of the song which the poet wishes to sing will suit the calm mood and the quiet atmosphere of the evening. The poet says that he will sing this song slowly. Through this song, he would welcome the pleasant return and descent of the evening to the earth. In the evening, when Hesperus appears, the supernatural beings who have slept during the day, that is, the fragrant hours, the elves, and nymphs all wake up. The pleasant things related to the evening get ready to welcome the goddess on her happy return to the earth. The poet says that he would love to wander about in the early starlight over some wide open grounds or he would like to visit some ruined building in a barren heat. The grey-coloured walls of this building would make him awestruck in the dim light of the evening. Next, the poet goes on to say that if he is prevented from going to such ruined places by the winds of the spring season or by heavy showers of rain, he would like to spend the evening in a quiet hut located alongside the mountain. From this hut, he would enjoy the view of the surrounding wild country, the swelling floods, small cottages, and the dimly visible spires of churches tolling the evening bell. From this location of the mountainside hut, the poet would love to see the dark veil of the evening gradually falling on and spreading over the entire landscape. Evening would cast this veil over the landscape by means of her dewy fingers. Then the poet goes on to say that spring loves to bait evening's lovely tresses. Summer loves to stay on a little longer in order to play beneath her lingering lights. Autumn loves to fill the lap of evening with heaps of dry leaves. Winter shouts and howls through air, tearing away her clothes to frighten her. But evening casts her sobering influence on humankind and the forces of nature. She quickens the poetic imagination of man. She inspires peace, friendship, 
knowledge and brotherhood among people all through the varied seasons of the year poets friends scholars and lovers of peace will enjoy the pleasures of the evening time with that i come to the end of the paraphrase of this ode thank you so much for watching we'll meet you again very soon bye